AP Calculus AB, Unit 9, Day 1, B, Assignment, Office Hours. Um, these are the answers, multiple choice, 1B, 2B, 3D, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7A, 8C, 9B, 10C, 11. So it's not multiple choice, so this is some good review from last chapter. So this could could be good review for like a retest for like a unit eight. So pause the video if you need to check your answers. Okay, so you guys show work, of course, sometimes more work to get it to match the question, the answers that they have. Also look at the answers for clues as to what you want to make your answer look like. So this is going to be x to the 6 over 6 plus x to the 3 halves. Divide, multiply, divide by the new exponent, multiply by the reciprocal. So um, none of these answers fit it. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> this would be the answer, though. OK, number two, w prime, initial condition, find w. So w is going to be the uh, interval of w prime. So this is going to be interval of 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x dx. So that's going to be 4x to the fourth over 4 plus 3x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2 plus c. We use initial condition, one, plug one in. Now, a lot of this cleans up nice. So it's going to be one to the fourth plus one to the third plus two times one to the second plus C equals 12. So that's one, one, two, that's four. C equals eight. So W T equals X to the fourth plus X cubed plus two X squared plus eight should be the answer. X fourth, X cubed plus two X squared plus eight. Answer is B. <clears throat> All right. Number three, particle moving along the line, acceleration, time two, velocity is 20. So that's V two equals 20. Distance from, its distance from the origin is 34. What is the distance function? So it's distance at time two equals 34. So I'm thinking kind of like a position function, I guess, right? And there's a bunch of positions. So I guess we need to work backwards to get velocity. We need to integrate 3t squared. So that's going to be 3t cubed over 3 plus c. And use the initial condition if you plug 2 in. It should come out to 20, so c equals 12. So the velocity function equals t cubed plus 12. So the position function is going to be the integral of that. So that's going to be t to the fourth over 4 plus 12t plus c. And then we use initial condition, plug 2 in. That's going to be uh, 16 over 4 is 4, plus 24, plus C should equal 34. So C equals 6. So the position function would be T to the 4th over 4, plus 12T, plus 6. T to the 4th over 4, plus 12T, plus 6. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Number four, stone is rolled upward from the top of a 192 foot building. So that's your S naught with initial speed. That's your V naught. What is the speed when it hits the ground? Well, I guess we need to come up with the equation. It's gravity. ST equals negative 16T squared plus V naught T plus S naught. And we got to figure out when it hits the ground first. Okay. So we're going to factor negative 16 out. 
that'd be 22 or 12. T minus six, T plus two. T equals six, T equals negative two. So time impact, we're not gonna do negative time. So the time is, um, let's make sure I did this right. Uh, building down, oops, hold on. It's hurled downwards, so the initial velocity has to have a negative e so that's gonna be plus so this is gonna be plus this is gonna be negative so it's gonna be negative six positive two that's the one we want yeah downward direction negative they gave you magnitude there okay so now we need the it says speed so velocity would be the derivative of position negative 32 t minus 64 we're gonna plug two into that And we're going to get negative 128 feet per second for the velocity when it hits the ground. Now it says speed, so speed would be the absolute value of velocity. Doesn't care about direction. Okay. All right, number five. Little uh, integration. Uh, well, this one's surprisingly nice. The antiderivative of secant is tangent, and the antiderivative of secant tan is secant plus c. Wow. <clears throat> Doesn't get much easier than that, right? Now, if you wanted, you could try and make this more complicated. And secant tan, you could done like one over cosine, sine over cosine. You know, which is sine over cosine squared, and then you could do u substitution. I, it's totally not worth it, but hey, it's an option, right? And then you would get, well, I don't want the negative, so it's gonna be negative du over u squared, it's gonna be negative u to the negative two du, it's gonna be negative u to the negative one divided by the new exponent plus c, it's gonna be one over u plus c, it's gonna be one over cosine x plus c, which is the same thing as secant. So I guess, or you can just remember secant tan is a group of secant. Okay. Number six, function f, they're giving me derivative equation of a tangent line, x equals one. So we're probably going to get initial conditions from this. There's the slope, right? If you want a point, you plug x in and get y equals 11. So the point is 111 that they share, right? So that's your initial condition. Um, but so... I don't even think we need the slope, but to get f, you would integrate f prime. So you would integrate 2x plus 3. So you get 2x squared over 2 plus 3x plus c. And so I think we only need this initial condition. We plug one in you get should give you 11. Um, I made a mistake here. This should be over two, which makes things a lot nicer. So that's gonna be four, so c equals seven. So your final equation is x squared plus three x plus seven. x squared plus three x plus seven. B. All right. So this one, I think our strategy should be to distribute the division. This is x to the 1 half. Rules of x minus 2 subtracts. This is x first. So that's going to be x to the 1 half 
plus 2x to the negative 1 half dx. So you distribute the division, and it's going to be power. We'll bump it up 1, increase by 1, divide by the new exponent, multiply by the circle. Uh, <clears throat> plus c. So I mean 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 4x to the 1 half plus c is the first one right there, and that's A. Okay. Number eight, particle moving along the distance function. It's really more like position function, unless it's moving the same direction all the time, which I, is a possibility, but uh, I don't think it actually is. During time interval, what is 12? How many times does the particle reverse direction of movement? So that means V changes signs, right? So I think, at, uh, I mean, I don't think we need to do a line check, but the, uh, the velocity is 6t squared minus 42t equals 0 undefined. And then we factor at 6t out, t minus 7. So t equals 0 and 7 are places where it changes direction. I know it changes direction because they're not even roots of any kind. If it was a bounce, then it wouldn't count. So... Between 1 and 12, though, there's only 1. Oh, let's say I made a mistake. Oh, shoot. I made a mistake. There's a, there's a lot more to the function. Uh, 42t plus 60. So I missed that part right there. So if you take a 6 out, 6t squared minus 7t plus 10. And then minus 2 minus 5. So t equals 2 and 5. And both of these are between 1 and 12. So the answer is actually 2. I that little extra part of st slipped by me. OK, uh, number 9, rock is dropped. So that probably means its initial velocity is 0. This is its initial height. So position. How long does it take to hit the ground? Use 32 feet per second squared as acceleration due to gravity. So our equation is negative 16 t squared plus 0 t plus 160. So we just ignore that. And we want to know when it hits the ground. So we're going to set it equal to 0 and factor. So we can factor out a, six, a negative 16. And you could either do factoring or you could solve the quadratic equation. You get two times, but really we only expect to have one. The negative time gets thrown out. So that's the time. It says how long will it take to the ground right there? Square root of 10, which is, well, it's between 9 and 16, right? Square 9 and square 16. And it's definitely close to square 9, so it's definitely... Uh, closer to three, so I'd say like three point. I mean, it's one out of seven units. So, I mean, the closest one that looks to me is D. I mean, I think that's a actually a reasonable one to get without a calculator. Number 10, we could do U substitution. I actually know that the inside, the only thing that's pop out is a four, so I just really need to put a one fourth in front. Like, I could look at this list and be like, okay, it's going to be 1 fourth sine 4x four plus 7 plus 8. I think it's, I think it's that right there. That didn't do any work. But if we decide to use substitution, we should support our answer. So it's going to be 1 fourth cosine u du. So it's going to be 1 fourth sine u plus c. So it's going to be 1 fourth sine 4x plus 7 plus c <clears throat> but that inner function even though it looks a little more complicated the x term added or subtracted to it's not going to pop out the derivative of all that's it's not going to be an issue it's that four in front you get this extra four so you need one fourth all right 11 particle moves a straight line acceleration uh time is positive find the velocity function well so we got to work backwards
So velocity is going to be the integral of v prime, which is the integral of a, which is going to be the integral of negative 4t, which is going to be negative 4t squared over 2 plus c. And so the integral, we didn't have spark of a straight line. Doesn't look like we have initial condition, negative 2t squared plus c. Um, oh, it says find velocity function if v0. So I guess maybe just for part a, uh, we'll see. So c equals 32. So your velocity function is negative 2t squared plus 32. Find the distance function or position function if the initial position is. So we're going to keep going. And we're going to integrate s prime, which means we're going to integrate velocity, which means we're going to integrate negative 2t squared plus 32 dt. So we're going to get negative 2t cubed over 3 plus 32t plus c. We're going to use the initial condition if plug 0 in. Should be a c. I don't know why that too. Should come out to 10. These all drop out, so c should be 10. So the position function should be negative 2 thirds t cubed plus 32t plus 10. Okay. All right. Um, find all times when the particle is at rest. That'd be when velocity equals zero. So we're going to take our velocity equation, negative 2t squared plus 32, set equal to zero. Factor out the negative 2. Difference of squares. So we get t equals negative 4 and 4. And we're not going to include negative time. So this is a little different than time to impact. But we're still not going to include negative time. Find the average velocity. So remember, average velocity is mean value theorem. It's the slope of the position curve. And we're just going to find the slope between the two endpoints. Just do a secant line. So we've got to plug 5 in here. Uh, it's going to be uh, 125. That's going to be 250 over 3 plus 160 plus 10 minus plug 2 in. Negative 16 over 3. 3 plus 64 plus 10 all over 5 minus 2. Okay, so the, we have to distribute this. The 10s are going to cancel each other out. We're going to get um, negative 250 plus 16, so it's negative uh, 234. Um, and then 160 minus 64, that's going to be 96. Just trying to simplify this. Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9. 3 should go into that. So that's negative uh, 7. 70 would be 210. And there's another 24. So that's negative 78. So we get uh, 20, uh, 18, positive 18 over 3, which is 6, the V average. There we go. Okay, that is it.